Welcome back once again, family and friends, brothers and sisters. It's your boy, Brother Courtney, a.k.a. The Lord's Paul, WKPR host of WKPS Radio, where key players speak. And this is a Christian brother's perspective. How you doing? I missed you. Listen, today's topic is modesty, or in contrast, excessiveness, or extremes. You know, I look at um, all of the things that's going on in society, and I'm like, whatever happened to being modest? Whatever happened to not taking te- things to the to the brink and beyond? Like everything has to be big and bold. I remember when I was growing up, it was a great show that I always liked to watch because it would show me things that I wasn't privy to growing up in the area that I lived in, and that was called the lifestyles and the rich and famous. And these things were crazy, and these are what people. This is the way these people grew up, showing up, showing us a whole new life with all kinds of fountains made out of metals and just crazy artists and things of that nature. So it has some kind of entertainment value to it. But in this day and age, modesty is like profane. It's like if you're modest, they look down on you like, oh, you're not special and all of that. And everything has to be taken, you know, to the 10th and beyond. You don't even get recognition for doing things right anymore. You only get seen if you do things flashy. Now they got all of these TVs where, you know, you have glamorous parties for 16-year-olds year that, you know, I don't know whether or not they deserve it or not. That has not That's not for me to judge. But, you know, I don't know if it's actually teaching them anything where, you giving, you know, individuals these parties that's like just astronomical in price, hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know, millions of dollars in some cases for a 16-year-old's birthday party. You know, and, and, and we Christians, non-Christians, whatever, we always make excuses for them like, well, if they got it, if I had it, I'll do it too. Well, don't you think there's something better that you can do with that money? I had a conversation with somebody in my Sunday school class, and I think they disagree with me, but I have an issue with somebody just having a car that's worth more than most houses in America, and, you know, you're supposed to be a servant of God. I'm not saying that you're not, but I would think that if you did have that type of material, and you had that type of material possession, that you would actually be trying to reach those who had like value or had like material possessions because that would give you an end to actually preach the gospel to them but i don't see the relevance or the significance of you taking like some extremely expensive vehicle into a low-income housing area and because most people there they're not hearing anything that you're saying they're looking at that rod and most of them are trying to figure out how they could get to that rod, so they really ain't trying to hear you. They're arguing over your possessions. They really not really hearing what you say. And so most people might not like it. I know this might not give me any friends, things of that nature, but I have to speak on it because I know when I seen it, I'm like, yo, this is a car I want. I don't care how you got it. I'm trying. I might have thought about taking it from you. That's how a lot of people I grew up think, or grew up with think. So you know, I mean, can we be real? I mean. Come on now, why do we need such extremes? A car is meant to take you from point A to point B. If you need a little luxury, cool. But when a car starts getting above 300 grand, you ain't even talking about being comfortable while you're driving. You're showing off. Can I speak plainly? Well, we gotta show off. Who are we trying to prove something to? Listen, let me go to the Bible on this one because I know a lot of people think that I'm being judgmental and whatnot. But the Bible speaks about being modest in so many different ways. A lot is pertaining to um, women and their beauty, but it's still relevant all the way around for all of God's people. In 1 Peter chapter 3, you know, I'm actually just going to read two quick verses because, like I said, it's pertaining to the wife. wife. But, you know, it, it did, really does spread beyond just the wife because this is an attitude that all of us should have if we are professing, you know, love for God. In, in, in verse 3, it starts, Whose adorning, let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart 
the hidden man of the heart, and that which is not corruptible, even an ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which in, is in the sight of God of great price. So, okay, some people might not know what it means to be meek. Meek and weak is not the same thing. Weak means you don't have strength. When you're meek, you have strength, but you reserve that strength and you don't use it all the time. When you're quiet, that don't mean that you're dumb or you're weak or you're passive. When you're quiet, that means you're most likely listening and trying to absorb stuff. And those things, they are uh, they are wealthy in God's sight. The scripture says they have a great, uh, they are of a great price. So God actually looks upon modesty as being something that's valuable to him. You know, didn't Jesus come very modest? He came from a very poor tribe and born in a manger. Don't, y'all don't know what a manger is. He was born where the animals actually live. And we're talking about the king of all kings. And I know that the Lord has some money to work with because he had a, a money man with him and he collected offerings and whatnot. But you know, he had Jesus wearing gold chains and then he had, he had some shoes and he walked everywhere he went. When he had him, a, a, he had a horse, or what is it, a donkey and a horse and they weren't even his. He, he borrowed them. Jesus didn't even have his own tomb. The rich man gave him his tomb. But we have all kinds of scripture that really signifies what we should be doing with our money instead of wearing it on our bodies and showing it all off like and what are we bragging for are we supposed to be putting out and yes i'm preaching right now so you know if you don't like the preaching you know i, I hope i don't offend you but i really want individuals to get it through their head why are we showing off what this world has to offer we should be showing off christ we should be showing off the fruit of the spirit the love, the kindness, the meekness, the gentleness, and so on and so forth. Where is that at? We have this world where love is where love is irrelevant and lust is more important. Sex sells everything. Females showing off their body in every way, shape, form, and fashion. Well, we come, come on, are you kidding me? Even a brother is showing off their body any chance that they get. And if they, you ain't looking a certain way, don't nobody even want to hear from you. If you ain't got a fancy call or watch anything nobody wants to hear from you and then we back that up i understand some people can't get past that stuff but we also need to support modesty you know it's something to be said as long as my kids can eat i got clothes on my back yeah i know i want to look good every now and again but do i have to show up even in church every sunday with the, a brand new suit with Hundreds of dollars, a shoe, hundred uh, shoes worth hundreds of dollars, and so on and so forth. I think that's a bit extreme. How about this, y'all? Church people know what I'm talking about when I say this, right? You know, you suppose most churches have a doctrine that a woman should a woman should have her hair head covered. That's a lot of churches have that. Some churches don't. But the head covering was meant. That you will cover a woman's glory, that they won't come off, you know, showing off when they come to church. Well, then they replace, they, they take this and then they went to the extreme and they start wearing these big old hats. Ain't nothing modest about these hats these women be wearing. These hats be going past their shoulders, like out to here, all kinds of high. People behind them can't even see the pulpit. And, and they talking about how they covering their head or they hiding behind the principle that they covering their head to be modest so that God can receive all the glory and get all the attention. Well, God ain't getting the attention out of that. I'm sorry. I know I ain't making any friends, but God don't get the glory out of that. You getting the attention. And we do like attention, but at some point in time, we need to put our flesh under the suggestion and look at how other people view us and what they are actually seeing. We want to put Christ first. How are we supposed to be the light of the world and the soul of the earth? And we do everything we doing is only um, poisoning, you know, what's going on in the world, making people lust and covet after material possessions and how we look and things of that nature. People, can we get to the point where modesty is actually a virtue as well? 
Okay, that's enough. That's all I got to say. You know, I thank y'all for tuning in to a Christian Brother's Perspective. I'm your boy, Brother Courtney, a.k.a. The Lord's Pawn. Remember, you can always check us out at UrbanBuzzMag.com. We are where key players speak. Peace out to all the key players. Much love to all of y'all. Gail Richardson, Brian Poppin, all of y'all. We just got love for all of y'all all the way around. You know, keep on praying for me. We love your support. You know, uh, let me just take this time. You know, we are, uh, uh, we are our own entity, and we accept all kinds of donations. If you like what you see, by all means, you know, contact us. All the um, contact information is at urbanbuzzmag.com. You know, if you like what you see in here, by all means, send a, put a comment in. You know, don't just like or dislike, but put a comment in. You know, even if you agree with me, you know, let's start this conversation. Remember, that's what the Christian Brothers Perspective is all about. So, once again, thank y'all for tuning in. So, you know how we do here at WKPS, Christian Brothers Perspective, be inspired, be encouraged. But most importantly, always most importantly, be blessed when you tune in to WKPS.